Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dudes and dudettes, we are live for session number 14 of the Galfond Challenge match between Phil Galfond and Action Freak with Phil up five and a half buy-ins with 9,500 hands played so far. And today I am joined in the commentary booth by the Rake podcast host, GPI award winner, mum of Crouton, Twitter personality <laughs> of the year writer poker player and self-proclaimed plo wizard jamie kester pot brewing on, on table one well, we will name the tables and i think it's only fair seeing as it's your, your first time joining us uh, that you choose the names but phil after three oh, betting wow. three going for a check raise on the five deuce deuce 13 and a half k in the middle stacked pot ratio of less than two going to the turn so I think in this spot, Freak's going to have some traps. Um, he's also you know, going to have a lot of stabs that just give up versus a check raise, uh, considering that Phil obviously has a, a range advantage in terms of overpairs. But Freak does have more do-sex, in my opinion. Could be completely wrong. Obviously, just see Phil show up with quads here and Freak with like a wrap or something. Phil not slowing down on the turn, setting up a very natural... River Jam. Got to the point, Jamie, where I'm almost immune to these 22k pots going to the river. It's disgusting. You know, 60,000 euros just being thrown around and it not even breaking it. It's insane. I don't know if you remember the beginning, but he does jam. Freak in a tough spot straight off the bat would be our first 65k pot of the day if Listen, I'm, I'm on uh, i'm on team phil galfon no matter what however i'm on team i want to see the cards so <laughs> i hope phil's got it and i hope he gets called so we're hoping phil's got a full house and gets paid by a week trips yeah. or something like that okay lfgpg does yeah, get the fold so we can do a mix. We'll do one round PLO, one round Scrabble. <laughs> Sounds good. Booked. <laughs> I mean, we've got a hand developing on table crouton. Six, seven completing on the turn. This is a three bet pot. And I assume Phil's going to play his check. Going to this turn after three betting pre. Does check over to Freak. A freak, obviously, with. A few options can realize his equity here if he did have a hand like eight, nine, ten jack diamonds. We could just put a ton of pressure on Phil's one pair of hands with no straight blockers. Does pile pot. Eighteen thousand in the middle. We've got hand developing over on table little egg as well. Freak the three better pre. Overpair range advantage. Continuing small on the turn after betting half pot. Phil drilling this river on table crouton. And apparently drilling that turn on table little egg. Has Jamie brought the run good? I hope so. It are these bets um, standard? I've only played small PLO tournaments, and I feel like people mash the pot button a lot. I don't see a lot of the like feeler bets and one third pots and stuff like that. Is that is that normal for PLO? What the the third pot sizing? Or, uh -huh. uh, yeah, I mean, Freak's gonna have a ton of overpairs uh, on that nine seven seven deuce uh, nine seven deuce seven. Sorry, could obviously target you know nine x weaker mm -hmm. overpairs etc does pile on crouton diamonds brick the 910 jack wraps brick fill in a tough spot with an overpair and a straight blocker overpair with pair blockers as well in a tough spot might have to click the crying call button if he unblocks diamonds does players fold story or person that i've ever played with where it was like right i need to win a hand against this guy was isildur um is is in our 10 25 game 
I bought in for like 1k and I was like, look, it's not going to be too hard to win a pot against him. You know, it's going to be a shallow stack to pot ratio. He's going to the flop. He's playing short. Just win a hand and you could tell everyone. Um, and he sat down and then about 10 minutes later, his food arrived and he left and I didn't even get the opportunity to to play <laughs> a pot against him. And I just felt so robbed of this epic story. Um, I haven't seen him since. I haven't had the chance well, to play with him You didn't lose any money to him. That's good. This is true. This is true. <laughs> Really? <laughs> Sophie Darling says, I tuned in late today. What's with the table names? Well, Table Crouton, that's my pup. And then Table Little Egg, that is Phil and Farrah's pup. So there you go. Pet names for the win. Crouton's a great name as well. But come on, you just out for a walk. Crouton, come, come on, boys. <laughs> Stop messing around. Come over here. <laughs> what a brilliant name. It's funnier now that he's a 60 pound full grown pit bull. He's a big dude. When he was just a little puppy, I'm like, oh, Crouton. And then now that he's huge, people are like, wait, that's Crouton? I thought about getting a really tiny dog and naming it something huge just to be more confusing. <laughs> like, get a like, chihuahua and name it Tank. <laughs> a bulldozer or something. Yeah. <laughs> really interesting turn card. Phil's going to have to go with his hand on the turn a lot of the time. He's picked up something like a pair with open end and back door hearts. Does just play as cool. Phil drilling this river. I feel like he has more hearts in his range after just calling turn. Action on Freak. 32,000 in the middle. Freak the effective stack with just shy of 19k behind. Car crash incoming? Question mark. A lot of draws do brick. The great game of PLO. The six, seven, eight wraps, clubs, the queen, king, ten, eight wraps, bricking as well. Phil says, I rivered hearts. 19k to go, Mr. Freak. Hey, Freak's got like two pair here with one heart blocker it's like unblocking clubs as well gonna have to click the call button another one of those side spots deep in the time bank it does make the call with the ace queen no clubs 110 bigs effective. Get your full bet horns in the chat. Freak says, let's play for the lot. Will Phil six bet rip it in? We've only ever seen Freak show up with aces in these five bet spots, and Phil gonna bow out. I think first time I've ever seen him full bet fold. Costing. Perkins is doing exactly what I would do if I was rich. He just he has the most fun all the time. Yes. And he doesn't care like he doesn't care if he looks bad losing to Phil or something like that. He wants like to shot take because the upside is so awesome. If he somehow just like rides the variance into a win there, he has bragging rights forever. And if he loses, people are like, Yeah, well, I mean, he didn't really think he was gonna win. It's great. I mean, that that's a fun way to live your life. Yeah, I wish wish someone would offer me a heads like with limited heads up PLO experience, just like, hey Henry, how about your one thousand euros versus my hundred thousand euros and we'll play two cent, five cent. Yes please, <laughs> booked. <laughs> <laughs> I need I need more friends like Bill Perkins in my life. Yeah, he's great. He I, I actually won a prop bet against Perkins. I didn't think I'd ever get a chance to have one against him. Um but he's into just animal rights and veganism and stuff like that. And I got paid ten K to go vegan for a year. And I did it, and I'm done. But now I'm oh, probably like 90 percent oh. vegan still. I remember that. Holy shit! I didn't know that was you. I remember seeing mm -hmm. that prop bet. You yeah, I got lucky because Tuckman asked for two hundred thousand dollars. He's like, I wouldn't do it for less than two hundred thousand dollars. And I was like, Well, I would do it for ten thousand. And Perkins like booked. I was like, Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
probably could have got a bit more in that spot but hey listen 10k is 10k like i'll take it well worth it well i wanted to try it anyway it, it's one of those things that like i had been interested to see to see if i could do it because i'm in vegas i'm in a city with good restaurants good vegan restaurants lots of like good stuff I, there's a whole foods like a, a mile from my house so it's not that hard and i would have broken like five times though if i wasn't betting someone on it because there's just times where you're like i really do want pizza right now this sucks <laughs> <laughs> Talking of high stakes, prop bets, pots, <laughs> Phil betting pot on the table on the right and free wow. with the trap by the looks of things. Phil getting an insane price, but how happy are you calling here with sixes, for example? Kind of throwing up, probably slammed the mouse on the table. He <laughs> trapped me. Freak saying, I've got King's Pal. Oh man, if Phil Galfon secretly tilts, it would be the funniest thing. Like he's just, you know, throwing shit. He's got a war room where he just smashes watermelons in between him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even the price of getting laid here with pocket sixes, it's, you're just never good, right? I mean, he folds Freak taking down a chunky pot, 66k going his way. But yeah, I've been trying to get a CCTV camera installed in Phil's office whilst he's grinding that we can get up on stream just to see how he's reacting. Obviously, you can't see his cards or his screen or anything, but I want to see, you know, the under the table fist bump when he like wins a big pot because I know <laughs> it happens. I know it happens. There's no way he doesn't celebrate. Don't forget, you guys that have missed any of the action, even with the match against Fenny or Freak. Highlight videos and daily recaps are always uploaded to Run It Once's Twitter and Instagram. Check out highlights. Moonlight Master, one of the OGs of our channel, sharing videos to YouTube as well. All of the hands that reach showdown, that is. Phil drilling this river, everything bricking, 25 Gs in the middle, must be nice. See if he continues. Does bet pot, 50k in the middle. How much do you throw up here? Oh wow, King Ten. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> King Ten was just like snapping. Yeah. But I was gonna say if you had like a hand like Queen Jack Ten Nine, you know, River Trips, throw up. <laughs> Marnie Poker, good ear. I do sound East Coast. I am East Coast. I'm from New Jersey, but been in Vegas for a few years now. I love the Jersey. New Jersey is. Really? Thank you. I, I feel like we get a bad rap because of the Jersey Shore and all these stupid shows. Jersey was a good place to grow up. Oh, There's come on. We, we've, we've got The Only Way is Essex and Tau... Uh, yes, we've got Towie, <laughs> The Only Way is Essex. Some other bullshit Chelsea show, whatever. So mm -hmm. London, London gets a bad rap as well. So I, I know how you feel. But no, I really enjoyed it. Um, had like some really nice walks down there by, by the river and some Really nice spots to grab lunch as well. It just mm -hmm. seemed to be a lot more chill compared to the hustle and bustle of New York. It was nice to to just yeah. get away for a day and relax a little bit. Yep, it's the nut spot because you can live on the beach and still be like an hour, an hour and a half from New York City, hour from Philly. It's a good place. Like I don't, I don't know why it gets all the hate. Yeah, some of us are jerks though. I think that's that's part of it. Like the the <laughs> attitude from Jersey is a little rough. Krabby clicks in easily the first time I've ever heard I love Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean I, I don't know too much about the the politics, if you will, but like from state to state, but I, I know that people from New York aren't huge fans of people from New Jersey and mm -hmm. some people from Jersey like saying that they're from New York and what have you, but yeah, is what it is. I, I like Jersey. 
don't ever leave. I lived in Manhattan for two two different times for a year apiece. And uh, yeah, people just who live in Manhattan don't ever leave the island. It's crazy. Just want to recap that 21K pot. Phil turning his two pair blockers into a bluff when the five paired on the river blocking full houses and freak ended up calling off with a weak flush levels on levels of plo being played here beautiful bluff combo just received word from nick that phil is currently down 15k we'll take it don't mind being down half a buy-in rather be up half a buy-in but I just am enjoying the fact that Falcons was just a typo from a uh, jungle man. And now he's, he's going with that for the rest of his life, calling Phil Galf on Mr. Falcons. <laughs> Did you guys discuss on, on the podcast uh, where he, where he coined the name? Yeah, Falcon? that was it. It was just like an autocorrect. <laughs> wow. And then he decided, he said, it's very appropriate that Falcons, he flies above everyone else. He thinks he's better than everyone and that he's never going to get down there in the mix. He's like, I'm going to take Falcons down, bring him down to earth. I was like, all right, jungle. <laughs> That's brilliant. So really interesting sizing from Phil here on Little Egg, betting one third. And we have seen him punished in similar spots when he's chose this sizing. Let's see if he's deciding to induce with the nuts Give Freak a bit of rope. Freak piling. No snap call from Phil. Big sigh. And a quick fold, actually. Didn't even really use that much of his time bank. Yeah, I think there's... It's, it's either one one extreme or the other. You get the new... The players, the players that transition from Hold'em to PLO, they either don't fold middle pair on flop turn or river, or you get the people that, you know, they will only call River with the nut boat or the nut flush or the nut straight type of thing. So I definitely uh, know exactly how you feel. I remember when I first started playing, it was just like, well, you know, I've got the second nut flush here. He's bet part. Yeah, easy fold. <laughs> nut pedaling all the time. But yeah, the card mm -hmm. session, cards up session with Perkins was good fun. I, I think great. even with the cards down, uh, the last few streams, you know, Phil's been on the phone to Perkins and they're kind of just telling each other what they had in some of the bigger spots. So it's just been good fun. <laughs> um, when you switch back to No Limit, if you if you ever play cash, um, do you feel like PLO, just like having to think in terms of blockers and things like that, do you think that you get more wild in No Limit? Like I even playing a tiny bit of PLO, I'll start looking and being like, well, I do have the ace of clubs. I have the nut flush blocker. Like, let's see what I can do here. And I'm like, oh, it's pretty dangerous and no limit to think 100%. like that. I'll just say, just going to jump back into this hand quickly about, well, Phil's <laughs> folded after raising on the flop and Freak taking down a big one. But yeah, for sure. Um, certainly had a few sessions where I've either like flown back to the UK to visit my family and I'll, I'll go down to where I first started playing one, two see some old friendly familiar faces and you know, drop five buy-ins real quick <laughs> uh, well bottom pair uh, a block two pairs of block sets let's just rip it in they can't call oh yeah and when there's big pots feel free to just interrupt me i'm just story time over here so if you've got something to say i'll save my story for after the 40k pot i appreciate it uh, it's uh <laughs> It's refreshing having having someone someone new to you know kind of talk to, learn uh, your background and chat has been obviously asking a, a ton of questions as well. It's it's difficult even for me like I've never really felt comfortable trying to break down the hands in too much detail, um, purely because I feel like I'd be disrespecting Phil and and Freak because they're just so many levels uh, above me mm -hmm. in terms of. PLO, but I'll, I'll try my best every every now and then. That's I've run into that before with um I've had some really cool commentary opportunities, but 
A few of them have been um, like Poker Masters, US Poker Open, where every single entrant in the tournament is a better player than me. Um, and trying to break down what they're doing, obviously it's still worth doing, but it's like every time I'm commentating, I have to be like, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt because no, I, I think this is why Aldemir is doing this, but clearly, <laughs> you know, uh, if I if I was sure of it, I'd be in the tournament. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, in this this turn spot, so Phil's free bet pre, bet half pot, continue for pot on the turn, leveraging his like, aces and kings range advantage. I'm going to put, you know, Freak's draws in a tough spot, making sure that they pay to see a river. Um, Phil basically prepping over pairs, like aces with uh, spades, kings as well. Probably going to play as check on this river, although SPR being what it is, around 0.3. Never really folding kings or aces with... Well, I was going to say aces with a straight blocker, but ace-jack, obviously, now the nuts. Mm -hmm. When just going to throw up if we've got, like, king-queen-jack and forget piled into, because we just have we don't have much fold equity. Phil did river... Second nuts. Nice. The second nuts. That's brilliant. Farah's saying Venny and, Venny and Phil are friends now. They text most days. It's so cute. That's, a, that's amazing. <laughs> that is really cool. I, I don't know. I was wondering how that would end up because that swing had to have really hurt Venny. That's, that's got to screw with your mind, right? If you're, you're feeling like you're dominating and you're like, oh my God, I'm, I'm a giant killer. This is amazing. And then it's the end and you just get it like ripped from your clutches. Like that is, uh, that's brutal. That's really cool that he's able to come back from that and want to be friends with Phil. Yeah, that's brilliant. But I would, I would pay good money to see the hand histories. That's for sure. Because like I said earlier on, these small river sizings have just been getting abused and it just can't be the case that the other players had it every time because every time. We're, we're, yeah. we're, 10, we're 10k hands in now so it would be awesome if um if the players agreed to just do like a, a combo course together after this is done like if phil hired action freak to do a series for one at once that would be really cool to just go through some of the biggest pots they've played and, and review these hand histories that'd be amazing and would potential for a 100k pot on table crouton already 21 in the middle feel the effective stack with 56 behind does call board changing river card queen eight and king now beating 10 high straight on the turn we saw phil's bluff get picked off by freak table little egg as well a couple of hands back freak says rest that's thirty two thousand three hundred come Phil one time just just hit him with a click the 45k click back with no fold equity There it is. Let's go. LFG PGs in the chat, please, boys and girls. We've got 109k in the middle. And no snap call from Freak, which I would like to believe. And I don't want to celebrate prematurely. A man's about to scoop 120k pot. Have some of that. Oh, mate, if we get the time bank fold, that's just going to be so pure. We're getting 10 to 1 on a call. With 110k in the middle already. Hand in the cookie jar. The Jamie and Crouton run good. What hand, what could that be? Is that the second nut straight? Would you ever be uh, potting second nut straight there for value and then folding for the extra 12k? Or what, what could that be? Ooh. That's a really good question. I was thinking about the the turn nut straight, the 78, if I'm ever potting and then folding, or if I'm mm -hmm. ever playing as check call. The queen eight, though, that's tough because obviously we've got a queen blocker in our hand mm -hmm. and we're just getting 10 to 1. But you make a great point as well. I 
I mean, you've just got to give credit to everyone involved. Uh, obviously, Phil is our hero, but Freak stepping up to the plate, Venny stepping up to the plate mm-hmm. to, to take on some for this this type of challenge. Uh, like stakes aside, the the mindset and the time and effort that you need to put into your, your game to show up day in day out to to play these you know nosebleed stakes. It's uh, it's been a roller coaster of a ride so far, that's for sure. And props mm-hmm. to everyone involved. <laughs> Get Monero. It's just like Falcons to befriend them before issuing a rematch. Phil betting a third pot over on Table Crouton. Freak with the, what, not even two, well, two and a half X clickback. We're just going to chop this one up. Yeah, well, it looks like it. Chop it up, boys. Wow. Queen would have been a spicy river card. Yeah, they're going to have to do something eventually with the Hall of Fame because I think it's only how many people get in per year two, which was reasonable 20 years ago when, when the fields, you know, were how many poker pros were there really. Now, like, there's going to be a huge bottleneck of people who deserve to be getting in as people age into being eligible. That would be crazy if, like, if it's only two a year and we'd have all these super talented people turning 40. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> laughing at a comment in the chat. But, yeah, it's it's um, it's a great point. I think maybe if they upped it to, what, five? That would probably be good. But they they, they probably want to protect the, the prestige of it, though, right? So it's as logical as it sounds to up it because there are more and more players that you know it's not 20 years ago Mm -hmm. um but they may feel like if they upped it to five that it takes a bit of the the prestige away i don't know we'll see ari saying henry do people take your action (laughs) when you issue bets like phil galfon will be in the poker hall of fame as a first ballot no wonder why you win in those games believe it or not I get offered really good odds for a lot of the shit that I say on stream. I don't know why. I feel like it's just because people want the sweat, but I'm definitely up lifetime from prop bets made in the commentary booth. Let's put it that way. Wow. Big decision for Phil. On little egg. Don't really see him with many pot folds. It's going to have some though. Have some like weak two pairs with no straight draw, no flush draw. I think this is uh this is what Fair is talking about when you hear a slight sigh coming from the other room. Pigeon comment. Yeah, I think pigeon was like an insult similar to fish, just that you're like irrelevant and you're just, you know, you're out there scrapping for a seed here and there. <laughs> you're not really, uh, you're not at the top of your game. I think that that's about it. I, I, Luke might have to answer that if he's got more meaning to it. <laughs> By Crash saying he played a bunch of high stakes due to seven online at one point. I don't think his results were great. Yeah, I think a lot of the guys that were playing PLO were playing due to seven as well because there were a few soft spots. If I'm not mistaken, Isolde was one of the best at deuce to seven, and then he would punt it all off at PLO. Yeah. To the likes of Galfond and other crushers back then. I have a really bad feeling about this sizing from Phil on the turn on table crouton. And on table, little egg, board texture, we could see stacks go flying in in a three-bet pot instead. Phil just folds. Oh, there we go. We get the pot size river bet from Phil. I'm not as concerned now. This is where we all just throw up when Freak piles. <laughs> 15k in the middle. 15k bet from Phil. 13 back. 
Aya. The 8 6 getting there. Mm. Phil with the busted gutter and pair blocker getting looked up. The river straight. What screen name do you prefer, Jamie, out of Phil's screen names? OMG, Clay Aiken. Clay Aiken, it has to be. <laughs> oh, Mr. Sweets. It's so silly. He's got to open a screen name somewhere as Mr. Falcons at this point. Yeah, because on Run It Once, it's just Phil Galfon with his mm-hmm. his custom um, avatar. Maybe he should change it to Falcons for whenever he plays on Rio. I have a good one for uh, WSOP.com in Nevada. I am Dan Bilzerian. You, that's your screen name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, too, because I kind of do what the, the bird guy is doing in Twitch chat, is I only speak as Dan Bilzerian. So when people talk to me in chat, sometimes I'll just say things like, uh, if they, they berate me, I'll be like, listen, I got your girlfriend here. She thinks that my play was good. <laughs> Definitely a fun character to play. Check through on the Queen of Hearts turn. 9k in the middle, board pairing River. Everything in the world bricking. Diamonds, hearts, all the wraps. Is this where we just click the one third pot button with like ace queen, like an absolute gangster. Get that thin value. Wow, is that true? Seidel has seven bracelets in six different games? To be honest, that's such a boss. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Freak betting pot. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me to feel to look him up here with the queen or even a hand like jacks that unblock the straights and diamonds. Just because every river, like he takes the most aggressive action, right? Like at some point you have to just start adjusting your range and calling with like. I don't know, like what you just said. If he just has, uh, I don't know. Then you feel like an idiot when you call the queen and the guy's like, oh, vote. <laughs> well, I mean, it check check through on the turn. Uh, yeah, I mean, sevens, that's just gangster mm-hmm. AF Phil Galfon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, How awesome. disrespectful. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I say disrespectful, but it just goes back to what we were talking about earlier on um, with... You know, when your range doesn't contain a ton of strong hands in terms of relative hand strength, um, you, just, you just got to flick in the call sometimes, yeah. you know? That is a very big statement being made from Phil winning a 27k pot. Down around about 58 on the day, but he's made. Well, actually, I say that now that I look at the stacks, he was down 50k, so maybe down around a buy in or so on the day. We need to start channeling some energy into this room. We need some run good, or this could be the start. A board where stacks could potentially go flying in. Jack 10, 8, rainbow. Yeah, can we get some dogs in the chat? There are such a variety of dogs on Twitch. And since we named our rooms after dogs too, I think that would help a lot. Some, what, do, dog, uh, yeah, there we go. Some, yeah, some do, thank some you. Dog emotes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Phil plays his check. Six of hearts on the turn. Potential for a, what, a 90k pot? 95k pot? 18 in the middle. Freak saying you're going to have to pay 18k to see a river card, pal. Phil did have a hand like ace, king, queen. Instead just rips it in. That is a good sign. Both players with the redraw. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. 
I didn't even. See, I thought Phil had it as well. Freak with the nuts. Yeah. Phil with the set open ender and flush draw can't get there. Ninety four k pot going Freak's way. Crytox said that would be a match I could root against Phil on. Yeah, oh, I think that's kind sure. of the whole point. Like that's one where Phil would probably be happy to lose. Like if you're gonna run bad against somebody at some point, it would it would be cool if it's the guy who won a promotion to like play you heads up. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and e- even if um the the person that won the promotion didn't necessarily even have to qualify in poker terms. Like in five years from now, Phil just puts out a tweet. Where were you when I came back from a 910k deficit? Post a 30 second video and the best video I'll uh, mm-hmm. I'll play play you heads up for 50k or whatever 50k free roll. Freak getting freaky on this turn card. Oh, that's a sign we like to see, Phil. The 58 and a redraw. The old 589 ace. Nut hearts and a redraw to a high straight. One time, please, dealer. Freak in the tank. Oof. How much do you think they pay attention to timing tells from the other table? Like, if Phil's, like, quick folding over there to get back to this big pot. <laughs> That's a really good point. Uh, it's, it's not something I've really thought about too much. Uh, if you ever get the chance to maybe do commentary with uh, with Richard, I'm sure he'll have an opinion on that. I, mm-hmm. There's part of me that feels like this is a good river for Phil. Like he's got the 58 with a heart redraw. Mm-hmm. Another part of me that is somewhat concerned... But when I see the pile, yeah, I feel be much card. better about things. Ah, yeah. Oh, wow. That's brutal. Oh, man. He did have the 985 with the heart draw. Open ended straight flush draw. The nuts. Draw a redraw to the super nuts. Freak with the two pair and queen high hearts. Wondering if anyone bet um, any money on Phil sweeping the competition. That would be an interesting kind of bet, right? Like I, I think that could be something available on poker shares that Timex might have done. I didn't really see. That's that's see. Pretty hard I, to do, right? I know they were offering. I think. A re- I think at one point they were offering twenty-five to one on on Phil to to come Sweet. back. No, to come back oh, again. Yeah, Benny. Exactly I don't know. Benny, yeah. yeah, I don't know um, if there were any odds being offered for a clean sweep. I mean, you'd want what hundred odds, maybe more, mm-hmm. especially with the Perkins being a, a twenty buy and stop loss. But the, the variance in that is just insane. Hey, Scum Puddle, thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your evening. How did I How did I get the nickname The Iron Maiden? You got Blazing Spoons. I, I feel no like I, I made out good in this one. <laughs> I have no idea. I told you, I'm, I'm not even remotely interested in Googling what Blazing Spoons means on Urban <laughs> Dictionary. But I like The Iron Maiden. Reverdy saying, I have a pending bet on Phil to win that challenge under 7k hands. What the one against uh, Perkins? Wow, that's that's brave. 20 buy ins, 7k hands, and you only got 1.9. I would have wanted a bit more, as much as I respect Phil's game, one in 20 buy ins against anyone. You know, has the slightest understanding of the game, like Perkins. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's gonna be tough. Phil with the pot size bet. 
Brick Diamonds getting looked up by the set. It's all bad news for the last hour or so. Yeah, I mean, got to give credit to Freak. Put on his cape. Good call. But yeah, scores on the doors today. Well, it looks like since the reset, filled down around about 85, 90k, and obviously receive confirmation at the end of the stream. And if you aren't able to stay tuned for the next 10, 15 minutes or so, you can obviously find the session recap on all of Run It Once's social media platforms later on today. And if folks, and if he wins this one, he has a very, very good chance to sweep it. Yeah, I agree. I think everyone, even before this match started, saying Freak is the toughest competitor. Although, having said that, knowing Jungle Man and knowing Chance Corner, you know, those guys are also beasts in their in their field, and they're going to come in prepared. So. Well, I think that, yeah, I think the chance match is going to be super entertaining as well because he's known for being a bit crazy. So I'm yeah. sure we'll have some interesting paths played. The guy's a beast and he's mm -hmm. not just going to... First, he's going to know that he's coming into this match, uh, an underdog, and mm -hmm. he's going to do everything he can to uh, to come out on top. Really interesting hand on Crouton, filled with the check raise on the Jack of Hearts turn. Non-board changing river should be good news for Phil unless he's just running the old naked Ace of Hearts blocker bluff instead. Jams for all the biscuits. Fifty-three in the middle. It's been a while since Phil's won a 70k pot. Oh, there we go. Yep. The ultimate cooler. Four hearts on the board. Freak. Almost running out of time. Finding the call with the King High Hearts fill with the nuts. So it looks like Freak sitting out, which normally means, as it is now 10 p.m. Central European time, that that is today's session over and done with. Can we get some GGs in the chat? Not only for Phil and Freak, but for Jamie the last five hours worth of commentary and life lessons and coaching that you've been giving us. Don't take any of that to heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the stuff that you've been saying on stream. Yeah. Just don't, don't listen to me. Listen to me about getting a dog. That's about the only thing I'm sure of. <laughs> well, it's been an absolute pleasure to, to call the action with you today. And uh, I really appreciate obviously taking the time. It sounds like you've got an extremely busy schedule um, at the moment so to, to join me and to put up with me as well it's always been a lifelong goal of mine personally to get to do commentary with you so uh, that's oh, one really I'll checked off the list we will be getting the final figure from Nick any second now but just to let you guys and girls back home know that we'll be back on Thursday 5 p.m central European time with around about 4,600 ish hands to go and if I'm not mistaken, Phil coming into that session up around three buy-ins. But again, final figure will be announced on social medias. Uh, down 60 cash on the day. Jamie, once again, thank you so much. 